All right, welcome to the brand new module. Um, that's going to be the last module of the course. Over the last few videos and modules, we learned about fundamentals of um, testing and in infrastructure. We got started with uh, Chef Inspect, which is uh, one of the products from Chef, um, a leader in the market uh, for DevOps tools. We wrote a bunch of configuration using Se uh, Chef Inspect uh, on a Ruby using Ruby and we mocked and tested our infrastructure on Azure. Um, from a desired configuration language, we more moved on to a more of a programmatic um, approach. We using Teratest and tool by Gruntwork to test your infrastructure. Uh, we primarily wrote um, a very basic program to test your infrastructure, mainly virtual machine storage and their features like if the uh, security is in place and HTTPS enabled or not, um, if the virtual machine has got in the right uh, uh, into the right resource group or it has got the right um, um, uh, machine size and all those things which is typically being noticed in an infrastructure. Um, we also wanted to move from infrastructure testing uh, to monitoring because there's a thick line between testing and monitoring because whatever you're testing could come under that you could have done using monitoring also and now with the distributed system world which means you have multiple containers your application is bifurcated into a um, bunch of containers in a distributed world which means you've got five seven containers running for different backend services front-end uh, database like Elasticsearch or Kibana uh, or Cassandra could be anything and then you've got API services also running and let's suppose someday you want to just um, uh, understand um, where is your application is being utilized and how is overall end-to-end -end tracing monitoring um, logs which you want to capture and you could just do it using uh, open telemetry um, observability is part of uh, that ecosystem wherein you bring in tools to uh, cater to your observability needs uh, we would understand what observability is and how it is different from monitoring so without further ado let's get started as you can see that's the open telemetry um, uh, branding branding and it's kind of conglomeration of both open tracing and open senses uh, those who don't know about open telemetry it's an observability framework for uh, cloud native software so you whether your application running on any of the cloud uh, azure or gcp you could just use um, the observability using the open telemetry uh, makes it robust and portable a telemetry to build in feature of cloud native software it provides a single set of libraries, agents, uh, collector to capture distributed traces, metrics from your application. You can analyze them using uh, tools like Prometheus, Jaeger, and other observability tools. So it's like instrumenting, generating, uh, collect, and exporting your telemetry data. Telemetry, just as the name suggests, it's the internal of your application. Monitoring, you set up monitoring, right? And what comes to your mind when I sit, talk about monitoring, it's like setting up CPU uh, or, or the memory utilization or the disk space, all those factors which you know. How about things which you don't know? How about somebody is complaining that suddenly the upload time for your application has gone from 5 milliseconds to 18 milliseconds. Suddenly somebody, somebody is complaining that your front-end server is loading slow. One of your tabs in your uh, one of the page of your application is not responding how it is it used to. Somebody is complaining that the download button of your application is not working. How do you track all those things because you've got seven eight containers you have got a distributed system and looking all the distributed system at once is not possible at all you can you can spend hours and hours and still don't figure out where things has gone wrong and that's where observability comes into the picture because it gives you a holistic view that okay this is how your request has traveled from service a to b to c and this is where your application is kind of not behaving right um, currently, it is in um, uh, it's in beta across several languages, including Python, Java, uh, C++, Go, uh, Erlang, and a lot of other languages. Uh, but we anticipate um, its general availability soon. By the way, uh, it's one of the top most ranked project. In fact, it is one of the second most uh, ranked project under CNCF after Kubernetes, obviously, because that's uh, that's like one one tool which has disrupted the containerization world. 
um, it also supports uh, mysql radius uh, kafka jdaka uh, postgres framework and it uh, uh, supports majority of end to end uh, application performance management using traces metrics and logs so you can create and collect telemetry data from your services or application and then you can forward them to a variety of analysis tool like Yager, which we are going to use today so what we're going to do in the demo is we're going to generate some sample requests from our uh, hello world or demo application and we are going to see that how you can you can visualize them in some sort of platform like Yager. You could use any of your tools like Prometheus, Zipkin, whatever you like. All right, that's um, that's about um, that's about the CNCF. Um, why do you want to consider them? Because that's one of the cool features or a, a buzz buzzword in the DevOps world and monitoring world, and you simply want to latch into it and. Just um, uh, just want to let people know that you use it in your project. Uh, beyond that, there are several reasons as well. So one of the reasons is uh, it's got a huge community uh, influence. Um, so it supports Azure and GCP to be the major cloud provider. Then the, uh, the monitoring or uh, logging tools like uh, Datadog, Splunk, uh, Honeycomb, Lightstep, New Relic, um, Stackdriver, uh, and few of the top most users are MailChimp and uh, Postmates, uh, Shopify as well. It has got a massive collaboration with uh, Fluentbit uh, or Yager, which we're going to use today. So Yager is an open source end-to-end -end distributed uh, tracing tool, which helps you to monitor and troubleshoot transaction in complex distributed system. So if you've got a distributed system, your application are running in chunk of containers, uh, and running in Kubernetes or any distributed world, you could just use Yager because um, as on the ground, microservices practitioners are quickly realizing that majority of operational problems that arise when moving to a distributed system are ultimately in two areas, networking and observability. It's simply an order of magnitude, uh, larger problem to network and debug a set of um, uh, distributed services versus a single monolithic application. So that's what, what, what you're going to use it to find the root cause analysis of your project, of your application if something has gone wrong. Uh, if you want to track the service dependency analysis, like how your backend services is connected to your database, or your front end is connected to your backend services, uh, how the propagation happens, and what is the latency between multiple services, you can just visualize all of them using Yager, Zipkin, or Prometheus, or any of those analysis tools. Uh, let's talk about some of the dev stats. It's got more than 104 plus active members from 45 plus different companies and 40 plus different uh, countries. It has got more than 660 plus unique contributors with 60,000 plus uh, contribution already made. Um, that's the uh, that's a screenshot showing on the left hand side you've got an architecture diagram where you've got a user a user is requesting some is hitting some sort of application uh, www.blahblah.com and the application is attached with the back end and front end now you want to track that how much time your application has taken to serve the request of the user from front end front end pod to the back end pod um, consider them as two application and that's what you want to track because your user has suddenly started complaining that your application is slow uh, responding slow it's loading up slow than usual and being in a distributed world you don't know that how your application kind of behaves and you don't want to look up everywhere because you just don't want to be lucky and uh, and just to do a hit and trial rather than you know get to the root cause and understand what where actually the problem is and that's where your tracing tools kind of helps us if you see over here it's a span spans means how much uh, uh, it's, a, it's a span between a when a request is started from a point to the end like B and then you want to notice uh, then you want to see that how much how many hops it had how much time it had taken now you could just notice that it was taken earlier it was taking three five nine nine seconds now it is taking three three two to uh, three two to three which is which is uh, slightly lesser than 
uh, earlier and then you could see that the traces or the, the application is kind of going from one service to another and this is where the bottleneck is and then you can troubleshoot it further uh, in, in a quick span of time. Alright, enough of talking. Let's do a small little demo. It's going to be a very high level uh, demo wherein we have a sample application. Uh, it's just uh, we're going to spin up a Docker container and just hit the container and then we're going to uh, uh, just spin up the Jagger UI also and see how you could just see the dependency graph and how you can visualize tracing. If you're, if you're seeing the tracing for the first time, that's going to be very, very beneficial for you. Alright, let's get started. Um, I I am going to open my terminal and for the sake of the demo I've already ready um, got the commands over here so what I'm doing is I'm gonna copy the docker command and paste it right over here so what I'm doing is I am running an application a container name is Jager where I've defined certain port uh, and I have defined certain uh, ports for the application. The application runs on 16686. That's the port which is used by Jager. Now I have the and that's the image which I am using. Um, I should have the container running now. Um, yes, the container is now running just 16 seconds ago and that's the image name. That's the container ID um, and it's the name of the container. What I'm going to do is I'm go, going to go back to my browser and just try to hit the local host with 16686 port so that's the ui which you see when you open um, the local host with the port um, you don't see anything at the moment what you could just do is you could select the service you could select which type of operation you want to have and you want to can see the tags also so tags basically gives you um, if you want to search the application with all sort of error codes or successful requests you could do that using the tags and then you've got an option that the duration and all those things and then the result um, we've got dependency graph also that's empty at the moment and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin up an application as well and that's the docker command for the application I'm going to clear my screen and then it is going to uh, start pulling the application name as hot rod um, and it falls under the Yager tracing if you see that um, it is running the uh, container with this image and then it is pointing to the Jager uh, which we have already spent a couple of seconds back and now the container should now be running and if I go and reload my page and just do a local host on 8081 port I should have my application now you see that we haven't got anything uh, into the query just the Jager query because that's what we ran a couple of seconds back um, and other than that we don't have anything all right so that's your span kind of looks like now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, generate some request how your so let's suppose i am the end user and this is your application and i am kind of generating some sort of request there's a latency of this much time and i'm doing it for another application or another endpoint and doing it for japanese desert as well and amazing coffee roasters as well so i've got four requests go to my Jager and i'm trying to find the traces again and we see that couple of seconds uh, we have some sort of tracing already available um, and we see that we've got the traces we've got the operations uh, and we hit few of the dependencies and we see all the whether we want to look for the services or you want to look for the dependencies you've got three services um, and we have got a bunch of dependencies also might not make sense but yeah if you if it is your application had been your application it would have made more sense but this is how the tracing kind of looks like um, and I am going to go to my Jager um, so this is the span like uh, it, it started from here and in it here it got certain tags uh, the tags contains majority of the information like which was the 
uh, API endpoint, what was the status code and what was you, you trying to do where you put it trying to put a get or put request what was that uh, span kind and then you've got the process also all of them are successful requests if you try to generate some more request you should have them coming popping up into your Yager UI again so you've got all your operation uh, and you've got all your queries right over here and if you start entering that you see that this is how your real tracing kind of looks like that you have some some data some error you're getting error in the uh, redis um, uh, server and then you've got uh, all of these um, get request and then you, it's um, it gives you a time millisecond in milliseconds and how much it is kind of taking and it gives you end-to-end -end tracing uh, and also gives you how much um, how many errors you have that you, this one is showing that you had three errors so one customer request one mysql request uh, redis also had bunch of requests and this was made a couple of seconds back um, and you could just export them and, and build a dependency uh, graph as well so if you go to the dependency you would see that um, you have certain dependency you could just using a uh, a force graph or a DAG which shows you what were the dependencies being maintained from front end to route and then you've got customer driver and then from customer it was the request were taken to the MySQL and then the driver took the request to the Redis server and then you could just pull out all the information um, uh, you could just get, import some of the JSON as well and visualize the JSON as per the tracing as well all right so that was about it um, I hope this kind of made a little bit of sense those who are new to observability which means you could just uh, uh, use uh, uh, open telemetry and Jaeger in the combination and generate some uh, beautiful traces and metrics for your application troubleshooting uh, monitoring is also part of um, uh, part of observability we don't want to comprehend our uh, message in such a way that ob observability is the new monitoring no they kind of go in hand without monitoring observability can't be achieved and without uh, observability monitoring can't be achieved as well so it's a subset of observability you need to have both of them together monitoring gives you 50 q metrics around infrastructure but observability kind of gives you the holistic approach uh, tracing logging uh, metrics everything all at once in one area all right, I hope this was informative and you'll be able to apply these fundamentals on your distributed application as well. Thank you.